so i hope that you have answered all the 10 questions within 15 minutes uh, this is the mock test uh, part 15 of isro technical assistant examination we have done uh, 14 parts or 14 videos as mock test series with each having 10 10 questions this is the part 15 okay so uh, let us see the first question uh, in this video you can find questions from moderate level to or medium level to tough level questions okay so the first question is a uh, simple comparatively simple one it's a theory question in a microwave test bench why is the microwave signal amplitude modulated at 1 kilohertz so when uh, a microwave test bench is set up we use a microwave signal with an amplitude modulated at 1 kilohertz what is the reason a you can see the question on board anyway a to increase the sensitivity of measurement b to transmit the signal to a far off place c to study amplitude modulation d because crystal detector fails at microwave frequencies the correct answer is in order to transmit the signal to a far off place we are using amplitude modulated signal at 1 kilohertz it's not to study amplitude modulation not to increase the sensitivity and also it is not because the crystal detector fails at microwave frequencies the correct answer is option b is the correct answer because of that is we want to transmit the signal to a far off place we are using a or the microwave signal is amplitude modulated at 1 kilohertz okay 300 ohm quarter wave uh, sorry yeah quarter wave long that is lambda by 4 okay at 1 gigahertz transmission line so the uh, the transmission line is having a characteristic impedance of 300 ohms that is z0 is given i'll write the given values right z0 equal to 300 ohm and also the frequency of operation is 1 gigahertz and it is a quarter wave transmission line this lambda by 4 okay now it is connected to a 10 volt 50 ohm source so the source is you can clearly see on the board that from the question 10 volt 50 ohm source is connected on one end and uh, uh sources that is it is connected to a 10 volt 15 ohm source at one end and is left open circuit at the other end right one end is connected to a source with a 10 volt and 50 ohm uh source 10 voltage and 50 ohm resistance other end is open circuited right the magnitude of voltage at the open circuit end of the line is dash so you need to find the voltage at the open circuited end so this is a source connected and here it is open circuited the capacitive impedance of the line is 300 ohm this is a 10 volt 50 ohm source so you need to find what is the and also it is a quarter wave transformer so you need to find what is the value of voltage at this open circuited end right in order to solve this question you have to go for the relation that is load voltage vl by input voltage is equal to capacitive impedance is at zero by is at this is the relation you need to apply here so this is a case for a open circuit transmission line vl by v in equal to is at zero by is at it now you have the value of v in what is v in it is 10 volt so i'm going to apply here 10 volt equal to is at zero is is at zero is capacitive impedance so it is 300 is at in is this 50 ohm input impedance or impedance of the source it is 50 so i'm going to cross multiply 300 into 10 by uh, 50 so it will be it is 6 and the load voltage or the load is actually open circuited so that end or the voltage at this open circuited end so here the load is open circuited the load side of the transmission line is open circuited so the voltage coming at that point can call it is load voltage or that is the voltage appearing at the open circuited end and that is is equal to 60 volt is the correct answer and the correct answer coming here is option c which is 60 volt the next question is regarding a capacitor a parallel plate air fill capacitor has a plate area of 10 raised to minus 4 meter square area is given the plate separation is 10 raised to minus 3 so d is also given Minus three meter. Okay, it is connected to a zero point five volt, three point six gigahertz source. The volt is zero point five, and the frequency is three point six gigahertz. The magnitude of displacement current you need to find. 
So in order to find the displacement current, we'll start off with capacitance, finding capacitance. C is equal to epsilon 0 since it is air filled. Epsilon 0 into A by D. This is the relation. What is epsilon 0 value? Epsilon 0 is 8.85 into 10 raised to minus 12 meters. Right. Permittivity of free space or vacuum or air. 8.85 into 10 raised to minus 12. A is area it is 10 raised to minus 4 it is in meter square so you need to no need to change by d is 10 raised to minus 3 it is also in meter so no need to change again 10 raised to minus 3 3 and 10 raised to minus 4 cancelled so it is a 10 raised to minus 1 here and you will be getting 10 raised to minus 13 here okay so 8.85 into 10 raised to minus 13 will be farads, right? Farads is the value for your capacitance. Now, what is the value for charge getting stored? Q is equal to C into V, right? That is a relation. C into V. We have the value of C here. C is 8.85 into 10 raised to minus 30. What is the value of voltage? It is 0 0.5 or it is 1 by 2. Okay, this is or take the half of this. You'll be getting four point something. It is the value is four point four two seven into ten raised to minus thirteen coulombs. Okay, this much of charge is getting stored. Four point four two seven into ten raised to minus thirteen. Next, we need to find the displacement current. I current equal to Q by T charge per unit time the flow of the rate of flow of charge is called the current or you can write it as 1 by t is equal to f frequency q into f because since frequency is directly given you can use this formula charge is known frequency is known so i'm going to substitute the value here 4.427 into 10 raised to minus 13 then into I hope you can see it. Okay, I'll move the board. Uh, into 3.6 into 10 raised to 9. That is 3.6 gigahertz it is. So it is 10 raised to 9. And if you solve it, you'll be getting 1.59 milliampere is the value of your displacement current coming. Okay, so the correct answer here is option D is the correct answer. The next question is from sampling various signals or sampling theorem three analog signals have bandwidth of 1200 hertz 600 hertz and 600 hertz are sampled at their respective Nyquist rate what is the Nyquist rate it is twice the bandwidth or twice the maximum frequency comma encoded with 12 bit watts so each sample will be encoded with 12 bit watts and time division multiplexed okay so it is TDM application time division multiplexing the bit rate of the multiplex signal is that. So, so what we are going to do is we are going to sample these three signals at their respective Nyquist rate. Then we are going to combine the signal and we will be producing a time division multiplexed signal. Multiplexing means multiplexing or MUX is actually combining the signal, right? So, we will be forming a certain pattern and we will be combining the signal based on time division multiplexing. And what is the bit rate of the multiplex signal? You need to find okay first we will find what is the total what is the total sample rate or what is the total samples per second okay now what is the frequency or the bandwidth of the first signal it is 1200 right 1200 hertz it is so, if 1200 hertz is the bandwidth, then what will be the sampling frequency FS1? FS1 is equal to twice the bandwidth or it will be equal to 2 into 1200 which is equal to 2400 samples per second for the first one. For the second one, it is 600. So, FS2 equal to 2 into 600 which is equal to 1200 again samples per second for the third signal 
we are going to now time division multiplex right first we need to sample the signal only then we can perform tdm so again 600 then we will get fs2 sorry fs3 sample rate or the samples is twice 2 into again 600 it is so it will be 1200 samples per second so total there are 2400 plus 1200 plus 1200 total samples is total samples is equal to how much 4800 plus 1200 plus 1002 sorry it is 2400 plus 1200 plus 1200 it is so we'll be getting 4800 samples per second now we are not just sampling the signals we are also performing another operation called encoding and we are encoding each sample with a 12 bit word okay so if we are getting total 4800 samples means we are going to encode each of these samples as 12 bit so totally into 12 how much it is it will be 5000 that is this much will be your bit rate okay so you need to find what is the the rate of bits or how many bits we have to send per second right we are producing this much of samples per second it is this much of samples we are producing per second by sampling these signals and for each sample per second we are using 12 bits so total bit rate is equal to 4800 into 12 will be the bits per second okay very simple it is so you have to perform 4800 into 12 you will be getting 5 7 that is 5760 you will be getting okay this much or you can write it as 5 no it is not this it will be like this okay yeah or you can write it as 57.6 kilobits this much bits will be there 57600 bits per second or in kilo uh, in kilobits per second 57.6 kilobits per second okay so this much will be your bit rate okay so the question is the bit rate of the multiplex signal and this is the bit rate 57.6 kilobits per second correct answer is option c is the correct answer the next question is a 1 millivolt video signal having a bandwidth of 100 megahertz is transmitted to a receiver through a cable that has 40 db loss if the effective one side noise spectral density at the receiver is 10 raised to minus 20 watt per hertz then the signal to noise ratio at the receiver is dash okay so the concept here is we are going to transmit a signal through a cable which is having some loss so initially the signal have has a signal to noise ratio we need to find what will be the signal to noise ratio at the receiver so the signal to noise ratio which is uh, at the, the transmitter side will not be present at the receiver side due to the loss present in the cable okay so there is a transmitter there is a receiver we are sending the data through a cable there is some loss involved so the s by n here won't be the s by n here due to this loss right so we need to find what is the s by n at the receiver we have been given this value and we have been given the loss here so we need to find what is the s by n at the receiver side i hope you have understood the concept of the question next we'll try to do the question okay so the signal to noise ratio actually here directly s by n is not given we can find with the given data so first we'll find what is the signal to noise ratio at the transmitter side so the signal to noise ratio at the transmitter side is equal to the transmitted power by noise spectral density is given 
signal strength to noise okay into bandwidth that is the equation okay in order to find the signal to noise ratio at the transmitter side we are going to apply the equation transmitted power by noise spectral density into bandwidth okay so directly we can apply so what is the ptr or the transmitted power it is 1 milliwatt 10 raised to minus 3 it is milli means 10 raised to minus 3 by noise spectral density is 10 raised to minus 20 it is then bandwidth is 100 megahertz 100 into 10 raised to 6 okay now if you solve it you'll be getting 10 raised to 9 okay so this is the signal to noise ratio okay signal to noise ratio is given so this is a ratio value now we need to so this is the total signal uh, strength or the signal to noise ratio which is actually being sent to the receiver side but due to the cable loss some of this is getting lost right we need to subtract that loss from this then we'll be getting the received signal to noise ratio but if you closely observe the the loss of the cable is given in db but here we are not finding the value in db it is a ratio signal to noise ratio so we need to first convert this to the db how to take db db is 10 log 10 of 10 raised to 9 okay in the signal to noise ratio at the transmitter as 10 raised to 9 we need to convert this to db so that we can reduce the loss from this because this is given in db now how to find the db value of signal to noise ratio is equal to 10 log 10 10 raised to 9 why i have written it again because some of you were saying that how to take the logarithm and everything is confusing so we'll explain here see 10 log to the base 10 10 raised to 9 it is okay so this ignore this 10 here this much we can write log to the base 10 into or of 10 raised to 9 right now you can take this 9 outside and you can write it as 9 log 10 of 10 right log 10 10 is equal to 1 so 9 into 1 right so this much you have obtained as 9 okay i hope you have understood so into 9 so it will be 9 d db so we have obtained that signal to noise ratio at the transmitter where well, transmitter is 90 dbs and what is the loss loss is cable loss that is given in the question it is 40 db so what will be the signal to noise ratio at the receiver side it is s by n transmitter which is in db minus cable loss which will be equal to 90 db minus 40 db which is equal to 50 db okay so we have obtained signal to noise value or signal to noise strength of the receiver as 50 db so correct answer is option a if you observe the options they are given in db so you can directly answer sometimes the signal to noise strength at the receiver will be given in again ratio so you have to again convert this db to back to your ratio okay so sometimes you have to do that also anyway the correct answer here is option a is the correct answer the minimum number of 2 is to 1 marks required to realize 4 is to 1 marks this is a very simple question actually but you have to just think so you need a 4 is to 1 marks like this a b c d there are 4 inputs and 1 output this is a 4 is to 1 marks with how many select lines 2 select lines how can you realize this 4 is to 1 marks using 2 is to 1 marks? You can only use 2 is to 1 marks, right? You can split this 4 inputs as 2, 2, right? This and this, you can split. 
I'm going to give it as A, B and C, D. So this is my first 2 is to 1, second 2 is to 1. And again they have two select lines. I'm not going to give any name or anything. Just I have split it my inputs which are A, B, C, D as A, B here and C, D here applied to two 2 is to 1 marks. Here this will produce a output. This will produce again an output. Again we have two outputs. We need to get only one output. We have to create a 4 is to 1 marks. That is one output and four inputs. Four inputs we have applied. In order to have one output again we are going to apply this to another 2 is to 1 marks. With again two select lines which will produce only a single output. So this is your final output. And this is your structure looking like how many gates you require. You require 3 2 is to 1 marks. Right. The correct answer here is option C3 is the correct answer. The next question is again a theory question. In a full wave rectifier using two ideal diodes and center tap transformer, VDC and VM are DC and peak values of voltage respectively across the resistive block. You can see the question on board anyway. If PIV or peak inverse voltage, yeah, if PIV is the peak inverse voltage of the diode, then the appropriate relationships for this rectifier are dash. That is, you need to find what is the relationship of VDC, DC voltage and peak inverse voltage. If you see the options, you can find. You need to find a relation for VDC and PIV in terms of VM. That is a peak voltage. Okay. So the relation is VDC is equal to 2 into Vm by pi. So this is the case for a full wave center tap. Okay. VDC is equal to 2 into Vm by pi and the PIV for the diode is equal to 2 Vm. Okay. Correct answer here is option B is the correct answer. So the DC voltage VDC is equal to 2 Vm by pi and peak inverse voltage for center tap rectifier is 2 Vm. Okay, correct answer is option B. The next question is a statement and draw or false type of question. You can also find these type of questions. The statements are considered to uh, the following statements S1 and S2. The threshold voltage Vt of a MOS capacitor decreases with increase in oxide thickness. That is your first statement or S1. The second statement S2 the threshold voltage Vt of a MOS capacitor decreases with increase in substrate doping concentration. Which of the following is correct? A. S1 is false and S2 is true. B. Both S1 and S2 true. C. S1 is true and S2 is false. D. Both S1 and S2 is false. The correct answer here is option D both S1 and S2 is false. Why? Because the increase in gate oxide thickness makes it difficult to induce charges in the channel. Right? The capacitance depends on the charge getting induced in the channel. Right? Thus, v, thus as Vt increases, if we increase the gate oxide thickness, means S1 is false. So, the S1 statement is saying the threshold voltage Vt of a MOS capacitor decrease with increase in gate oxide thickness. No, as the gate oxide thickness is increasing, Vt is also increasing. The gate, uh, the Vt, the threshold voltage increases if we increase the oxide thickness. That is the correct answer. So, S1 is false. Again, moving on to the second statement, increase in substrate doping concentration that is, uh, the statement is saying the threshold voltage Vt of a MOS capacitor decreases with increase in substrate doping. That statement is also wrong because increase in substrate doping concentration require more gate voltage. Because initially induced charge will get combined in substrate. Thus, Vt increases if we increase a substrate doping concentration. Okay, so we have to that is, we are getting two conclusions from here. That is, if we increase the gate oxide thickness, 
or if we increase the substrate doping concentration for both these cases your vt will increase only okay that is if you are going to increase the gate oxide thickness or if you are increasing the substrate doping concentration for both these cases your threshold voltage will increase it doesn't decrease the statement is it decreases right the threshold voltage vt decreases for both these cases so both the statements s1 and s2 are wrong so correct answer is option d which is both s1 and s2 are false the next question the resistivity of a uniformly doped n type silicon sample is 0.5 so resistivity is given rho rho is equal to 0.5 ohm centimeter is a, is a unit okay if the electron mobility mu n equal to 1250 centimeter square per volt second and the charge of an electron q is equal to this uh, constant value you should be knowing this 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs okay the donor impurity concentration nd nd we need to find okay so the equation for first we will write the equation for conductivity we know that conductivity is equal to reciprocal of resistivity so we'll apply that so conductivity sigma is equal to n into we can write nd here nd or n into q into mobility of electron so this is the conductivity due to the electrons or nd into q into mu n nd is the donor concentration it is equal to small n which is the number of electrons okay and 1 by we can write it as 1 by rho resistivity okay 1 by rho equal to nd into q into mu n from this we can write we need to we need the value for nd nd is equal to 1 by rho into q into mu n okay so that is the relation just substitute the values and find the value for nd it is 1 by rho is it is given here 0 0.5 yeah ohm centimeter into q is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 then mobility is 1 to 5 0 okay if you solve it you will be getting 10 raised to 16 per centimeter square is the value for your sorry not centimeter square it is centimeter cube okay 10 raised to 16 per centimeter cube is the the donor concentration or the doping concentration of donors or you can call it as number of electrons to be proportional to the number of or it is equal to the number of electrons okay so nd is the donor impurity concentration and is equal to 10 raised to 16 per centimeter cube correct, correct answer here is option b the 10th question is again the statements and true or false type of question consider the following statements s1 and s2 s1 the beta of a bipolar junction transistor bipolar transistor reduces if the base width is increased okay so that is your first statement that is the statement s1 is saying as beta no not as beta the beta is reduced as base width is increased and according to the second statement or s2 is saying that beta of a bipolar junction transistor increases that is beta is increasing if doping concentration of base is increased base doping concentration is increased now the options are a s1 is false and s2 is true b s1 both s1 and s2 true c both s1 s2 false d s1 is true and s2 is false correct answer is now we know that for a bjt there are three regions there is a emitter there is a there is a emitter there is a base and there is a collector now the first statement is regarding the base width what happens if the base width is increased if the base width is increased means we know that there is some recombinations of 
the electrons which are actually moving towards the towards the collector side is happening in the base region with the holes present right so if the base width is increased means the recombination of the carriers will happen more and due to this your alpha is reduced okay and the relation between beta and alpha is beta is equal to alpha by 1 minus alpha right so here due to the increase in recombination your alpha is reduced and as a as a result of this reduction reduction in alpha beta will also reduce so your first statement is correct next next is about the doping concentration of this base region if the doping concentration of base region is in place that will also cause the increase in recombination of the electrons which are actually moving towards the collector side right so when the electrons are moving towards the collector side in this case also here some recombination will be happening and due to this again the alpha is reduced and beta is also reduced not increased so this statement is wrong so the second statement is saying your beta the current gain beta is increased due to the increase in doping concentration of base which is wrong it is again reduced so as we increase the base width or if we increase the base doping concentration for a bgt your beta will be reduced so that is the assumption or what that is the fact which we can get from uh, get while answering this question that is if we increase the base width or if we increase the base doping concentration for both these cases beta or the current gain common emitter current gain beta will reduce okay so for both these cases beta will reduce the correct answer is your option s1 is right and your option or sorry your statement s1 is right and your statement s2 is actually wrong so the correct answer is b s1 is true and s2 is false okay so these are the 10 questions which we have uh, included in this video so i really hope that you could uh, gain some new knowledge or some uh, new facts or new concepts from this video if yes please do give it a thumbs up and also share this video with maximum of friends and if you want more videos please do subscribe to the channel also please do follow the facebook page in order to obtain some notes okay so that's it thanks for watching and keep on watching